that would be for Paul Dover. Here comes the key. Everybody, Lance Russell for Corey Macklin, Dave Brown, son of a gun. Dave, everything has been happening since oh, we've been I gone. Oh, I tell you, yeah, you were away for a week. We've yep. had some title changes. For instance, uh, Brian Lee won the USWA heavyweight title, and now it's been held up due to some problems with uh, referees uh, being uh, out of the action, and then one referee rule one thing, one another. The USWA has held the title up. Held the title up, and son of a gun, we've got a show today that I think you are going to love. Let's go to the ring. Get it started right away, Corey Macklin. Hi, Corey. Okay, Lance, we're ready to go. Our opening bout on USWA Championship Wrestling. First introducing 218 pounds. Wrestling from New York City, here is Chris Kenyon. His opponent today making his way to the ring area, 222 pounds. Wrestling from Memphis, Tennessee. <laughs> Two sexy Brian Christopher. One ball, a 10 minute time limit. Bill Rush is your referee. Ready to go with this one, Lance, today. Canyon in there. Chris, uh, an outcast from the New York Rangers, he said. He's got his hockey stick with him. That may get in trouble. Brian may have some ideas of what to do with that hockey Absolutely. stick. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Brian Christopher, until just not too many days ago, the USWA heavyweight champion, been in a match with Brian Lee. The belt changed hands, but uh, also you got to give an assist to uh, Brian Lee's head of security, Jimmy Harris, for all of that. But the belt is held up now, so Brian is not, uh, neither Brian Christopher nor Brian Lee is the champion. But uh, I'm sure Brian had some thoughts about the situation. Let's listen to Brian right now. This week I told everybody I was going to get my belt back. I was going to become the USWA heavyweight champion. And after the match was over with, not only Brian Lee, but everybody else knows without a shadow of a doubt. I should be standing here with the belt around my waist. But there was big controversy. They say, how did he win that match, huh? Well, one referee says that I might have pulled out a chain, but the other referee didn't see it. So the belt's been held up. Well, Brian Lee, you're not the champion now. It's held up, my friend. So get ready, because not only am I too sexy, but I'm going to be the USWA heavyweight champion when I meet you in the ring again. Beautiful drop kick, and that son of a gun will uh, win a lot of championships. Brian, just as determined as always, he's ready to get that belt around his waist again, Dave. He's got Chris Canyon upset. He's down on the floor talking to the crowd, and uh, that is almost always the wrong thing to do. You better pay attention to the guy you're booked against. And it, what is this? Canyon over there irritating at the crowd. And uh, Brian Lee waiting for him to get back in the ring. Maybe he figures the best thing he can do is stay out there and go with the crowd. He's got a better chance than yeah. he does against Brian Christopher. Brian just calmly waiting for it. Canyon going with a side headlock. Brian Christopher hanging on. Pulls Canyon back to the rope. Fires him across the way. Let's him go by. Lee's over since. Uh, Chris Kent. Whoa! Oh. Christopher reacting to a counter move by Chris Canyon. As Canyon grabbed his foot, he really raked the head off. Ha! Slid out of that ring and ripped him with a right hand where he had good solid footing down there on the floor. Chris Canyon picked up. Yes, by the hair. Christopher making no bones about it. 
Whip across the ring. Misses that swinging right hand. Got that super kick right on the chops, Davey. The super kick puts Canyon down on the mat. Brian Christopher climbing the ropes. He's on the top one. He springs. Chris Canyon bounces in the ring. Brian covers two. It's over. Brian Christopher with a victory. What a good win. Brian Christopher showing he can back up Whatever it is that he says pops out of the ring. We've got more action. Be back to it in just a moment. Boy, I'll tell you, that's the kind of thing you just, <laughs> you've got two different opinions, no question about it, as you had two different referees in there, and it uh, it's a situation with this belt held up that, you're not going to find any middle ground anywhere down the line because you've got one camp that says we ought to have it. The other camp is going to say we ought to have it. And no way. Here comes head of security, Jimmy Harris, out here. And what is it, Jimmy? Let me tell you something, Russell, and the rest of you people. This is prime time Brian Lee's interview time, and he does not come out until I say that it's okay. Well, let's say it's okay and get him out here. Well, that's the problem here. That's your talking. We don't listen to you. Primetime Incorporated listens to me. I say when Primetime comes down here. Another thing, we have been here for two weeks. And the USWA is full of cheaters. Now, what would make you say that? Russell, they are cheating with primetime Brian Lee, and they are cheating with me. I dare, 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 dare somebody to come out and explain to me why we're being cheated. It simply is a matter of question and what was right, what is fair. Randy Hales made the decision about the title being held up. He doesn't have it. Randy Hales, Randy Hales, Randy Hales, plays favoritism, he has his own body. You can see that with Tommy Rich and Doug Gilbert in the top. You're not gonna this come out here and mess up our show like you do week after week. This is a Brian Lee interview. He has a match where the title is held up, Jim Dodson, and we're not gonna listen to you. You get Brian Lee out here and you get out of here. You're not a manager, you're his head of security, I understand. Let me tell you something, you're a cheater, you're robbing us. You will not do that again. If you do, stick boy, I will break your neck. Okay, enough of that kind of conversation. He's got a match coming up here, and if he's gonna back out and forfeit the match, fine. Let's find that out too. If he's gonna get in here and wrestle, let's get him in here, because I can tell you one thing, he has some competition today. Once again, you do not give the orders. I give the orders. I say when primetime shows. Here he is. There he is, primetime Brian Lee. He's got a match scheduled with Scott Studd today, and we're looking forward to it. You know, forget that with Scott Studd. I want to get to a point here, Lance Russell. Well, First of all, I said I would come in here two weeks ago, and I would get a title shot. Yes. Stipulation. And you did. Second of all, I said I was going to make big money, and I'm doing it. Third of all... You people here, Randy Hale, Eddie Marlin, have your fair-haired few boys running around here and you take care of them. Little dust, you don't even scratch it off. You know, Brian Christopher, you come out here and talk the talk, but I don't see you walking the walk. Next time Primetime Brian Lee gets his hands on you, I'm going to break your little skinny neck. I tell you what, you stand out here, you can run that mouth, run those chops, and tell all these rednecks what you're going to do, but proof's in the pudding, brother. So if you want some of Primetime Brian Lee and you think you're mad enough, bring it on for Primetime Betty. Well, I could say one thing, my friend. All you got to do is go beat Brian, Brian Christopher for the title again, and you got it back. Where is my opponent? Get him in the ring. Here he comes right now. I'll show you what I'm going to do to Chris. Well, you got more on your hands than you may think. Let's go to Corey Macklin in the introduction. Corey. Okay, Lancer, we're ready for uh, this next bout. A one-fall, 10-minute time limit. First introducing 229 pounds wrestling from Atlanta, Georgia, 
here is Scott Stout. His opponent today at 287 pounds, wrestling from Orlando, Florida, Primetime Incorporated, Primetime with his head of security. We're ready for this one, Lance and Dave. Okay, Dave, I think we've both been impressed with uh, Scott Studd in there. So we have more than just a little uh, match ahead of us today. No doubt about it. I, I don't know how well acquainted Brian Lee is with uh, Scott Studd, but since he's been in the USWA, he certainly looked mighty good in the matches in uh, which we've seen him. Primetime Brian Lee, of course, he's a very large, very tough, uh, very talented wrestler. There's no doubt about it. And, and again, I don't like the presence of head of security Jimmy Dotson over in the corner, but it looks like that's where he's going to be. I noticed Scott Studd taking a look at him over his shoulder in there and saying, get him away. So that shows that Scott's head is totally into the match. He's aware of it, just like you were talking, Dave. Don't like him out here, but uh, at the moment, there's nothing that can be done about him. Scott Studd backed into the corner is prime time. Brian Lee swings and misses, and Scott a little quick, and he's out of there. The speed is what uh, Scott is going to have to rely on, his speed and agility here today. Let's see how it goes right in the middle of the ring. Prime time, Brian Lee, doubled up right fist, got him in the top of the head. Scott Studd is staggered. He's back on the rope. Brian Lee fires him across the way. He ducks under. There it is. Speed and agility. at prime time, Brian Lee on the mat, out of the ring, and a conference with the head of security. Beautiful drop kick coming from Scott Studd, and he put the big Brian Lee down and out of there for a conference, as Dave said, with Jimmy Harris. And I'm afraid no good can come out of these two guys putting their heads together. Scott circling, ready for it. Tangles up, collar and elbow. Brian Lee definitely has the size advantage in there, but as Dave has been pointing out, that speed absolutely on the side of Scott Studd. He is a good one. Holding on to the side headlock, he's finally shoveled off to the ropes and a knee to the midsection. Puts him right down in the middle of the ring. Well, there's another advantage for prime time Brian Lee. He, is, uh, he doesn't really care whether he follows the rules or not, just he wants to try to avoid getting caught breaking the rules by the referee. There's a snap suplex by primetime Brian Lee. That was a good move. You got to give him that. And Scott Studd suffering for it. Primetime Brian Lee back into the action quickly. Picking up Scott Studd by the hair. There's just one of those little violations. Pick him up by the hair. Don't give him a chance to get going. Throw him back into the uh, turnbuckles. And now he's got his boot across his throat choking him. He is so tall and those legs are so long. He really can get a lot behind it as he has Stud back up in the corner. And Scott is definitely not where he wants to be. Get him away from the corner and Brian Lee helps him out. Now a whip across the ring. And again, he puts that foot up, rips him with the right hand and Scott Stud down on his back. The cover, one, two. Stud kicks his way out. Scott's still in action, but he's in trouble. There's no doubt about it. Prime time Brian Lee has been able to get him at close quarters. Here comes Scott firing back. This is what he needs to do. Slow down prime time Brian Lee and maybe surprise him with a move. Good drop kick. I, I don't know, but what maybe should have gone for a cover quickly there. Into the ropes. Prime time Brian Lee jumped over the back again. Well, now that time, primetime Brian Lee wasn't in a position, and it was a good move that Scott Studd didn't go for the cover. Look out, into the ropes. Oh, he missed the press. Got the referee. This is trouble. Referee down on the mat. Jimmy Bill Harris Rush. up on the ring, Dave. Yep. Scott Studd inviting him in. Uh, he, he threw something. He threw that uh, collapsible uh, stick, whatever it is, into Brian Lee, and he smacked him in the back of the head. Two. And that's gonna be it. Yeah, that's one to be proud of. You better believe. Great win over Scott Studd. Uh -huh. He pulls it out, that collapsible nightstick that he has. And here comes Brian Christopher in talking to the referee. This is what happened to Brian. Somebody uh, came in and said, hey, he was using a chain. Well, it was, this referee right here, as a matter of fact, uh, Brian Lee nails him from behind. 
Brian Christopher was trying to tell a referee about the foreign object. But now they've got Brian Christopher two against one in there. Took Scott Studd, threw him right out over the rope, and a double clothesline on Brian Christopher after the whip. And Jimmy Harris and primetime Brian Lee really messing Brian Christopher over. Here comes a little help out of the back as PG-13 comes in. And that's time for Lee and Jimmy Harris to get out of there. I guess they will go out with a win, though Christopher was trying to tell the truth about it, Dave. That's right, but the victory for primetime Brian Lee. We'll be back in a moment. Well, from the situation which developed last week, downtown Bruno and uh, Karen and Miss Texas and all of that, we'll talk about that as we go along. We got more action coming up in the ring here very shortly too. But uh, uh, here comes downtown Bruno right now, calling for, calling for music. I don't know anything about any music. <laughs> oh, there's some music. I, I'm... Some, some real music, some Scottish music. I, yeah, well, like I hear that, the music. Yeah, that's that's well, a real nice touch. I, I want to talk to you. What, what, I want to talk to you a little bit about your interference in uh, the matches so Wait far. And... Oh, shut up! You know what? I think it's great. You know what? Here it is. Poor little Karen, my wife. We're just sitting at home. All she ever does is watch the Oprah Winfrey show and you know watch Guiding Light and One Life to Live and you know cooks their food and does her jogging and works out the spa. As you can tell she works out constantly at the spa. You know, basically, she's just, she's a homemaker. She just stays in our little house in Wilds, Mississippi. Girl. She's a real good girl. And what's funny is Miss Texas, the big USWA ladies champion, the queen of the USWA, the unbeatable Miss Texas. I call a little girl that's never wrestled before in her life. She gets in the car, drives up 19 miles from Wilds, and beats Miss Texas. Now, I think that's the greatest like a dog. I mean, can you imagine that? Here's a girl who's never been in the ring, never had any training, never had any wrestling uh, background or schooling, and beat the so-called champion of the ladies. I mean, but, but has downtown Bruno, who is doing things like holding up her opponent, or shoving her opponent off the ropes, or is holding her opponent's foot while the pin is being made. You're not mentioning that. I didn't see any of that. Dave, see, you know what his problem is? You know, Dave's just a complete goof that oh, comes old. out here. Yeah, we're well, getting quite old. Dave comes out here, and he sees things, you know, from a different perspective because, you know, well, you know what happens when you get old like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Well, we saw the videotape, and we see, saw it happen live. To you. so harsh. Miss Texas. Look at that camera. Let everybody see how pretty you are. <laughs> everybody knows I beat you Monday night. I beat you good. Hey, you could beat her on a Tuesday night, a Wednesday night, a Thursday, a Friday, twice on Sunday, any Saturday. It don't matter. But the beatings aren't going to stop yet, Miss Texas, because I don't recall hearing you apologize to downtown Bruno, and I certainly don't recall hearing you apologize to me. So the beatings are going to go on, and they're going to get harder, and they're going to get tougher, because until you apologize to me, Wait a minute. Oh, look out. I've, I've seen those Miss Texas apologies, and it can be big trouble. And I don't think it's going to be an apology coming right now. I think if Miss Texas gets her hand on downtown Bruno or Karen, you're going to have trouble. Look at this. Miss Texas going after Bruno, and now Bruno and Karen have decided. I, 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 I don't know. They got a phone call or something. I don't know, but they are, they are definitely gone. <laughs> as Miss Texas arrives. Karen, when I get you back in the ring, I'm gonna kick your butt all around the ring. And Bruno, if you ever get in my face again, I'm gonna knock your teeth down your throat. Well said for Miss Texas, she can do it too. We got a match as we said a moment ago. Let's go to the ring, here's Corey. All right, Dave, we're getting ready for it. Can't wait to see that bout coming up this week. Making his way to the ring area, 251 pounds, wrestling from the open rolls of the USA. Here is Crusher Bones. His opponent today, making an appearance in the USWA at 244 pounds, wrestling from Los Angeles, California, Kitty Kindle. Kitty Kindle, one 
fall at 10 minute time limit. Bill Rush, referee, and uh, Lance and Dave, Kenny Kendall, back in the USWA. Oh, we got Crusher Bones wasted no time jumping Kenny Kendall as soon, actually, just slightly before the bell sound. He didn't wait at all. This Crusher Bones is tough. Oh, look at Kendall. Nice move. We got some comments a little bit earlier to find out something about Kenny Kendall. Here they are. My name is Kenny Kendall. I'm part of the new blood here in the USWA. Let me tell you something, I'm awfully proud to be here in this organization. They're some of the top competitors in the world. Now, I've been training real, real hard for the past six and a half months, and my body's in tip-top shape. I'm not going to promise everybody out there I'm going to win every match I'm in, but I will promise all the competitors of USWA one thing. When you wrestle Kenny Kendall, you know you've been in a battle. Well, we're seeing him in a battle right now, and thus far, Dave, he's looked very good. He's uh, been able to get the upper hand on big, rugged Crusher Bones, rips that arm over and around into a hammerlock, and Kenny Kendall is the name. And if he can beat Crusher Bones here today, he'll go a long way toward convincing folks in the U.S. government, all the fans, that uh, he is to be reckoned with, because Crusher Bones has been a noisemaker in the USWA since he's been around. I like that move right there. Uh, pressure hit him with an elbow, broke loose, went into the ropes. Kendall feigned that he had knocked him a little addled, and as pressure got close to him, he hooked that arm, took him over and down with it. Now he has that bar right across the uh, thigh, and as they stand up, he cranks it again into a hammer position. Kenny Kendall giving away a little hype to Crusher, but then a lot of guys do because he is a tall one, lanky 251. Pretty hard to think of 251 being, <laughs> making somebody lanky, but he is because he's a big guy. Kendall reverses him, snaps him right over and down with that very tight suplex. And Crusher has an answer to it, rake him across the eye, Dave. Yep. Coming off the rope, though, Kenny Kendall, nice move. He's got him down. One, two, he got it. Yeah. Oh, Rick out. He was able to hold him down for the count of three. Nice move by Kenny Kendall. Kenny Kendall, the victor, and that one establishes him right away as somebody to be contended with. We'll take time out. Got more. Be back for it in a moment. We have a match coming up once again here on USWA. Lots of action uh, here today, but uh, before we get to the ring, we want to take just a moment maybe to talk to some folks about uh, some action coming up. Uh, someone who has been here a long, long time ago, but is back in the area, and uh, she is here right now. This is the gambler. The gambler who uh, I, I see not only they have a deck of cards, maybe you got a, a dollar or two associated with that. Uh, and First time in the USWA in a long, long time. First of all, names are not important. I am the gambler. That's how I make my living, is placing bets and taking money from people, whether it's big money or small money. It doesn't matter. Whether it's in Las Vegas, in the casinos, or up and down the Mississippi River on the riverboats. I place my bets and I win. So what I would like to do, I would like to challenge PG-13 to a match here today on TV. Well, now PG-13 has a match coming up here today, but uh, it's, it's already scheduled and uh, what we wanted to do is give you the opportunity to come out and meet the folks and say hi and then uh, get on with the PG-13 match if you don't mind. Well, I would like to see what type of gamblers PG-13 is. What I, have, what I have here with me is $1,000. Cash, $100 bills. What I would like to do is bet this 100, I would bet this 100, bet this $1,000 against PG-13. All they have to do is put up $10. That's a thousand against ten. 
Well, okay, 100 to 1 odds, not too bad, but uh, what else do they have to put up? I would like a title shot for those belts. I have a partner. Me and my partner would love to take PG's 13's titles from them and make suckers of them. Well, I, I, we're curious to who your partner might be. And PG-13, here they come, uh, ready for their match right now. Uh, and I don't know if they're interested or not. I, and, and I don't know if we can get it, uh, get it approved by the USWA. But uh, I'm sure they're going to want to know who your partner is. They've seen you, obviously. Is this your partner? This is the man. This is Brickhouse Brown. First of all, what, what is Brickhouse doing now? This has nothing to do with Brickhouse yeah, Brown. Brickhouse we heard here? the gambling man, Mr. Las Vegas, out here running his mouth. You got a thousand dollars in hundred dollar bills against ten dollars. But you want a title shot with that? That's pretty good odds, ain't it, Dave? Well, it's good odds for the money, but remember, the belts would be on the line, too. $10. That's all, just $10 against your 1000 well, Wait a minute, you're forgetting one thing. The title belts. What's yeah. the belts, brother? Title, title's on the line. I guess this is his man here. These two, both of y'all, huh? Hey, hey, we've been around the world playing hard. Before any of you suckers face us, you better pray to God. Because we're going to hurt somebody and try and take you out. Put a strain in your brain and remove all doubt. Let me tell you something right now. We play to win, brother. Gambling is our game. Be men. Put the belts up. $10, you got it between the two of you, don't you? I don't think the $10 is a problem. For one thing, we, we, we're going to have to get a match sanctioned if you agree to it. We'll have to get approval. I don't even know if USWA will sanction it or not. Well, you see, these are all belts, Brickhouse, and you may be king of the tongue, bro. You may be out here to run out here and let your lips beat against your teeth, see? But this is wrestling, man. So if you would like to have a title shot today right now, we have never backed down from nobody, and we ain't starting right now, bro. Well, now, wait a minute. All right, they've agreed to the match, but we've got to get it approved. One thing to remember, PG-13, the gambler always has an ace in the hole we'll see uh, can can somebody tell me if uh, if, if uh, we can get approval from randy hales or someone to uh to sanction as a title match with the tag titles at stake we, uh, you know you can't just say okay the titles are at stake and let it go i can't certainly uh I, all right I don't know where Randy, I'll, I'll go find Randy. Let's get the match started and let's find out. All right. And uh, they will get the sanction part of it. We've heard what's been said. Corey, how about you doing the introduction? Okay, Lance, uh, I guess I'm not really up to par on all of my job because we had another bout scheduled here with PG-13. Uh, all I know on one side of the ring, the challengers are the gambler and his partner, as we all know, back in the USWA. Here is Brickhouse Brown. Their opponents, they are the USWA Tag Team Champions at a combined weight of 397 pounds from the hood. J.C. Ice, Wolfie D, PG-13. Bill Rush is referee, Lance. I guess we'll check and see on uh, the stipulation for this thing. Okay, Corey, we're about ready to go here as we're going to be having a match get underway. We'll get the word back on the belts. As far as PG-13 is concerned, the belts are at stake because they have no objection to it. They're risking the title and $10 against the $1,000 that the gambler put out here, Brickhouse Brown. Wolfie D pounded away with that right hand. Brickhouse, quite an athlete, always in excellent condition. The gambler, we're not as familiar with as we are Brickhouse, but apparently these guys have been together enough to where they have the confidence to put their money where their mouth is. They put up a thousand bucks in $100 bills in order to climb in there with PG-13. And PG has said, yeah, we'll put the title up. We don't back up from anybody. And the whip, Shoulder puts down Wolfie D. 
bothered him as he came up over the top and Wolfie goes down. Brickhouse, a lot of speed and strong. A goes to the gambler. Our first look at him in this go round as he comes in. Shoots a forearm, comes right back again. Pounds ahead of Wolfie D on the top turn of the JC Height. A yes to get in there, and he needs to come in right now. As he's hanging by to take the tag, but Wolfie can't get over there. Boy, Gambler is just smothering Wolfie. Oh, there's breathing room. He's waiting around. He should have been over and made the tag. He does now, and here comes JC Ice. A double whip. And the cable broke on the ring so that all the tension goes out of the rope. That doesn't stop J.C. Ice going over the top and covering the gambler. But the gambler's up on his feet now with a side headlock. Makes a tag on Brickhouse. Yeah, Dave, you get a word? Uh, the USWA uh, promotion has conferred, and they have agreed this is a title match. The belts are on the line. The belts are on the line, and right at the moment, PG-13 in between double on trouble because the gambler, and it all kind of coincided when that cable broke, and the slack came in the rope. It just seemed to change the momentum. I'm, I'm just simply saying that it coincided with that. And Brickhouse Brown and the Gambler have been dominant over PG-13 since that time, baby. One of those things where you had to wonder about the wisdom of doing it with uh, PG-13 having the title match already scheduled coming up a little later in the week. But also, uh, the money talk. I mean, uh, they were having, they were faced with putting up $10 to, to win 1000 and uh, that's a pretty nice payday for anybody. And, and uh, also, they felt very confident. I mean, PG-13 uh, have been excellent champions. They haven't uh, turned away from challenges, so they felt, sure, why not? Let's put the belts on the line, and that's what they've done. Total champion, and I got to tell you, talking about the wisdom, the wisdom to these guys is 10 $100 bills flashing in their face to go in there and beat somebody they would beat anyhow. That's the way they looked at it. Rickhouse drops down with a headbutt on J.C. Ice. J.C. count of one. And that's all they got was one and a half out of it, really. As Rickhouse Brown picks J.C. up. And Ray finds that leg, and there's that Russian leg sweep. And Rickhouse drops down. Misses it. J.C. out of the way. Looking for his partner, rolls over, tags Wolfie D, and now the fresh man Dave is back at it. That's what they needed to do. They needed to get Wolfie back in there. He had been watching from the corner, and he's having to take on both of them. Now the gambler, now JC is in there. We got all four men in the ring. The rope, boy, the ropes are sagging. That could be a problem in this match. Down on the floor, it's the gambler, JC Ice. Wolfie D and Brickhouse Brown in the ring. Wolfie takes it down, shoulders on the mat, referee doesn't see it. That would be a count of five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, look out from outside. Gorgeous George third sprays something in Wolfie's eyes. Brickhouse rolls him up and the three count, and we've got you champion. My goodness. Well, a series of circumstances came together on this day as Brickhouse Brown and the Gambler come out with a victory thanks to Gorgeous George III, and they are now the new USWA Tag Champions as the titles were officially put up by PG-13 and approved by the USWA. And as all of the circumstances came together, Wolfie had Brickhouse down for the count. The referee was trying to break it up outside. Gorgeous George III came in, interfered, sprayed it, and turned the tide around. We'll be back to talk about it in a moment. Some of those things that just happen uh, are
are the things that bring some of the most exciting moments in our life as we have known for a long, That's long true. time. <laughs> Lawler and Dundee battling away, but there was an unexpected kind of ingredient involved with it. Tommy Rich. Yeah, and this was a very important match because it was a match in, in which the winner, either Lawler or Dundee, yes. got a shot at, uh, at the uh, WWF title. And then you, you add Rich. And, and, and Tommy Rich ends up getting a ticket, getting right down in the first row of it. And if that ingredient wasn't enough to make excitement, I don't know what was. Let's take a look at some action right here. <laughs> Dundee all 
times of prestige. <coughs> oh, I, pardon me. <clears throat> I got to tell you, you're talking about three tough guys right there in Lawler, Dundee, and Rich. Bill Dundee. <laughs> he is not going to accept that from Tommy Rich. You can better believe that because he's just the kind of guy that when somebody does that, I mean, that's just about as bad as you can do it. Messing around and you step in uh, Bill's way, he's going to remember it a long time, Billy. You know, Lance, there's no, what's the old saying? There's no sense closing the door once the horse is bolted out the stable, right? No sense crying over spilled milk. Well, that's a kind of wrong, Tommy Rich. Now, let's just give you a little two-week history lesson here. It doesn't matter how you win as long as you win. That's what they say. Well, Razor Ramon's walking around with the USA belt saying, I'm the new world's champion. It shouldn't be, what it should say is Tommy Rich is the champion now. I guess I am a little bit, what am I, just what I just said. I don't know what the hell I'm saying, Rich, because you got me so mixed up here, brother. Razor Ramon won because of you. Jerry Lawler won because of you. And then you took a chain, you tried to beat my brains out. Well, Tommy Rich, we got a first blood match. They were going to just sit, suspend him, not want him back, right? Mm. But that wasn't going to be enough for you, Rich, because I know you, punk. I drove up and down the road with you when you was 18 years old and taught you everything you know about life and some things that you ain't going to know. Well, let me tell you this. That wouldn't have been enough for you. You would have bought a ticket every week. And whether it was my match, Jerry Lawler's match, Jimmy Dundee's match, it wouldn't have made no never mind to you. You would have jumped in and tried to make an example of somebody. Well, brother, I don't want you jumping in on my back. I want to be looking at you man to man. So this week, brother, you and me has got a first blood match. You know what that means? That means I can have a chain, and I can beat your brains out. And as soon as you start, yeah, come on, you bleach bond bum, get out of here. All right. Yeah. Come on, Billy. Now, just don't be jumping out. And now look, Tommy, you're just coming out here to start trouble again. I'm not out here to cause no trouble. The bottom line, Dundee, is I am the man. Not you, not Jerry Lawler, not a stinking one in this bunch. I am the man. You want some of me? Hey, 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 hey. Come on, you guys. Eat. Boy, I knew it. Let's get somebody out here and get it for it. Put him down. Come on, Billy. You guys got a match coming up. Save it for that. Whoa. Look out. Dundee and Rich, the minute I saw that look in Bill's eye, and here comes Rich, flaunting it, comes out here, and I knew we are going to be in a difficulty with See it. See what I mean? Rich, I'll tell you what I'd like to do. I'd like to put a big cage up around that ring and get a loser leave town, because this ain't big enough for you and me. First blood, brother, and I promise you we're going to see you. Okay, we got to take a break, and we'll be right back. We promise we deliver. You wanted it, here it is again. Excitement, yes. Brian Christopher.
son of a gun this very day. We got new USWA tag champs and a lot of other things happen. That's true. PG-13, I'm sure very confident they could win not only the money, but also retain the uh, tag team titles. Not to be. Give Gorgeous George third an assist on that, but there'll be another day where that will be settled. Gambler and Brickhouse Brown, the new champ. We got to get out of here for Corey Macklin, Dave Brown, Lance Russell saying bye-bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of USWA Championship Wrestling.